Good morning. Morning. Good morning. I am Sister Janine Gramick. I have been a Catholic religious sister, a Roman Catholic nun, since 1971. Oh, I'm sorry, 61. <laughs> I always try to make myself younger. <laughs> I was an assistant professor of mathematics at the College of Notre Dame of Maryland in Baltimore in the 1970s until the school sisters of Notre Dame assigned me to a pastoral ministry on behalf of lesbian and gay Catholics. I had been at the University of Pennsylvania getting my doctoral degree in preparation to teach at the College of Notre Dame when I met a gay man and his friends. And that friendship drew me into a new life of ministry on behalf of and advocating for justice and equality for lesbian and gay people. As you can imagine, there have been obstacles in the Catholic Church, but I have continued in this ministry of advocating for justice and reconciliation and understanding. So I speak here today on behalf of New Ways Ministry, which is the organization that I helped to co-found that works for justice in the Roman Catholic Church for GLBT persons. I speak also on behalf of the National Coalition of American Nuns, on which I serve as a board member and a co-coordinator. Uh, and I also speak on behalf of the majority of U.S. Catholics mm -hmm. who favor mm -hmm. legal marriage for same-gender couples. Mm -hmm. This conviction of mine and of these organizations and people that I speak for flows from our own church's social justice teaching. I'm very saddened that some of our church leaders have claimed that marriage must be between one man and one woman. That the definition of marriage has always been the same, that it cannot change. Well, this is simply not so. For example, Christian churches or Jewish institutions no longer sanction polygamous marriage, though this practice was accepted in biblical times. In the early Christian church, there were no religious ceremonies for marriage. Marriage was considered a civil matter that defined rights and responsibilities, afforded structure and stability to society, and also regulated the inheritance of property. It was only in the 11th century that the European Christian Church <coughs> assumed more control of marriage and only in the 12th century that the church declared that marriage was a sacrament. Marriage laws, both church marriage laws and state marriage laws, gradually changed over time as society gained a greater understanding of basic human rights. So marriage and what we think and say about marriage will continue to change, but marriage itself will not substantially change, essentially change, because marriage is the union of people who love each other. We are not here today to ask our churches to change what they teach about marriage. We are here today to ask the state to change the laws about marriage so that the law can 
be embracing, so that the law can be accepting, so that the law can grow to accept people who love each other. We are here today to ask the state to protect, protect the rights of those churches who do recognize same-gender same marriage so that their heterosexual members can claim the benefits of civil marriage and their same-gender couples can also claim the benefits of civil marriage. Our civil approach to marriage needs to be free from discrimination. So if heterosexual marriages are recognized by the state, then not recognizing same-gender marriages is discriminatory. Yes. And this political approach is morally wrong. This discrimination is politically wrong and morally wrong. Marriage equality is politically right and morally right. Amen. And so we are here today to speak for the political and moral right of same-gender marriages for our couples who are here. Thank you.